Uh, we're thrilled you can join us tonight for our presentation of La Grande Guerra, which is part of our series, The Great War on Film, that we are co-presenting with the Nanavik Institute. Uh, the Nanavik Institute film series is always one of our highlights of the year because it gives us an opportunity to really seek out the best of European <coughs> cinema and to work with faculty on some really interesting uh, selections of films. We'll be continuing uh, this series throughout the fall. Uh, we want to give special thanks to the Meg and John Brogan Endowment for Classic Cinema, which has also helped us help support us in the series and in bringing in uh, many classic films. Uh, tonight's film, uh, Mario Monticelli's La Grande Guerra, is a film that is actually unavailable in the U.S. Uh, this is a special screening that we've arranged uh, through Cinecita Studios, uh, where we've had the film imported from Italy. Um, it's also a film that is unavailable, uh, as far as we know, on DVD, uh, in, at least with an English subtitled version. So uh, you're really getting a special experience tonight. So you're in a good company to be able to watch this film tonight. So we're grateful for the opportunity. Um, we also uh, value the Nanavik Film Series because of the opportunity to work with faculty and to have faculty come and introduce films. Um, I'd like to introduce our uh, special guest tonight, uh, Professor John Welly, who's going to share his thoughts on tonight's film. Please join me with John. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ted. Uh, before I begin, I do want to just underscore what a special occasion this is and how hard it is to... Uh, get a copy of this film and be able to screen it. So this is really uh, a coup and hats off to Ted Barron for bringing it, this film here tonight. In my brief remarks, uh, I've just broken them down into three parts. Uh, first of all, I'll give a brief introduction to some of the general historical facts, context of the film, and then I want to make two points. The first one has to do with the genre to which this film be belongs, Commedia all'Italiana, or comedy Italian style. This is one of the great exemplars in this genre, which was a dominant genre in Italy from the 1950s through the 1970s. And the second general point I want to make involves a discourse of Italian national character, which is also very much present in this film, particularly through the actor Alberto Sordi. La Grande Guerra, the Great War, is a tragic comedy set in World War I, starring two of Italy's greatest and most popular comic male leads, Alberto Sordi and Vittorio Gassman. One plays a northerner, while the other character hails from Rome, which is considered part of the South in this film. In this way, the two of them stand for all Italians. Through these two figures, this film participates in representing a discourse of national character, as is typical of the comedy Italian style film genre to which this movie belongs, they play anti-heroes. These very reluctant soldiers do everything they can to avoid fighting. Monicelli uses comic effects deliberately to underlie the unheroic nature of war. This film's irreverent representation of World War I made it very controversial in the Italy of its day. In fact, it was almost not produced due to the protests of the military. Released in 1959, it is the first film in the history of Italian cinema to present a critical view of the Great War, which the Italian Pope of the day, Benedict XV, had called una strage inutile, a useless slaughter. In 1959, this film shared a Golden Lion Award at the Venice Film Festival with another film that made a, a wry comment on war. Roberto Rossellini's Il General della Rovere. In addition to sharing the Golden Lion Award at Venice in 1959, the film was also nominated for an Academy Award as Best Foreign Language Film. Forty, Forty years later, in 1999, the critics for Chalk magazine chose it as one of the 100 most important films in history. It won great success outside of Italy, particularly in France. The comic elements in the film leave a bitter taste, as they are meant to do. I don't want to reveal the ending, as that might spoil the poignancy of the film, but let me stress just two of the general characteristics of the film, as I mentioned at the outset. So first of all, a few comments about the genre to which this film belongs. And Mario Monicelli is considered one of the masters of this genre, commedia all'italiana, or comedy Italian style 
And here's what Mario Monicelli says about this genre. Quote, I don't think that the Commedia all'Italiana, comedy Italian style, has an imperious date of birth. It has always been around. It is a way of seeing reality through a kind of comedy that is a little bitter, a little risque, sometimes vulgar, sometimes at the limits of coarseness, which is typical of Italy, which is in our nature, which comes to us, by the way, from the most distant traditions, from the Commedia dell'arte, which was carried forward by the power of farts, of enemas, of phalluses. I say this because in the past I've been accused of expressing myself in a vulgar manner. However, what I have always said is that an Italian tradition, such as that of coarse comicality, is part of our tradition, which is bitter, which is born from misery, and which grows strong on the misfortunes of others, on malformations. Because Commedia all'Italiana is this, a mixture with comedy always at the base. It is the leading axis of our national cinema. In Italy, for the public, for Italian production, the cinema has been comedy Italian style." End quote. Other well-known comedies, such as Fellini's I Vitelloni, La Dolce Vita, and Amarcord, offer humorous representations of the arrogant and amoral Italian male, who, underneath, is sensitive and lovable. In a similar fashion, La Grande Guerra presents what appears to be a criticism of weaknesses in the Italian character, only in the end to reverse its judgment. I don't want to say anything more about the ending, as I said, so as not to detract from your experience of the film. My second main point involves a discourse of Italian national character that is present in this film through the two characters played by Alberto Sordi and Vittorio Gassman. A criticism of the Italian character, Italians speaking ill of other Italians, has a long history and manifests itself in, a ver in various ways. Italy is an ancient civilization, but as a country, it is rather young as a modern country. It was only unified politically in 1870, and this discourse of Italian character, public vices, weaknesses in, in Italian character go back to this unification when it was felt that weaknesses in Italian character would have to be overcome if Italy were to become a unified country. Another way in which this discourse manifests itself, Italians typically say, Italy would be a great country if it weren't for the Italians. I had a student whose father is Italian, and when I was teaching this point in a class a few years ago, he, it was a kind of moment of revelation for him, and he said, my father says that all the time. So this discourse has a long history, and it's embedded, and it gets carried forward in different ways. Part of it has to do with travelers to Italy who present certain images of Italy that then get mirrored by Italians. But this particular film is part of a series of films in the 1950s to the 1970s, which takes this discourse and brings it into the cinema, which also solidifies it. In fact, one scholar, Silvana Patriarca, has written a book on the subject, Italian Vices, Nation and Character from the Risorgimento to the Republic. She asks the questions, why do Italians believe that they have a national character and that this character is a major reason for their political woes? Why is their self-image so frequently derogatory? Whereas neorealist films of the 1940s, such as Rome, Open City, Paisa, and Shoeshine, depicted the Italian as hero of the resistance, or as the poverty-stricken worker of the immediate post-war years, comedy Italian-style films such as La Grande Guerra, which was the dominant genre from the 1950s to the 1970s, exhibited a remarkable gallery of anti-heroes, a distinctly new phenomenon in Italian cinema. Alberto Sordi, in particular, who we'll see tonight, affectionately known as our great national Albert, despite his, despite his strong Roman accent, would become the epitome of the so-called average Italian. So Alberto Sordi has come to be seen as epitomizing Italian character, the weaknesses, the flaws in Italian character. La Grande Guerra stands at the beginning of a series of films that would set a, a trend. Alberto Sordi built his fame by specializing in often farcical portraits of anti-heroes. Before acting in films in the 1950s, 
Sordi began working in the Italian film industry as a dubber of American films in the early 1930s. With the transition to sound in the early 30s, Hollywood did not want to lose the lucrative Italian market. In fact, in the 1920s, 80% of the films screened in Italy were Hollywood. So with the transition to sound, Italy did not, uh, the United States did not want to lose the Italian market, but now with language films, this was going to be a problem. This was a problem that had to be overcome. Some of the first sound films in the Italian language were not made in Italy, but in the United States. In fact, Laurel and Hardy were among the first to make films in the Italian language. Although they did not speak Italian, they were willing to try to make a film in Italian. In fact, they, uh, people held up cue cards that could not be seen on screen, and they would speak the Italian that they saw in these cue cards. So they spoke a very fractured Italian. When the films were released in Italy, the bad Italian spoken by Laurel and Hardy seemed part of the comedy. For this reason, when dubbing became the norm, because under Mussolini in the 1930s, films in the original language were no longer allowed to circulate in Italy, they had to be dubbed. And they had to be dubbed into Italian, and the dubbing had to be done in Italy. So because Laurel and Hardy spoke this fractured Italian, when they got dubbed into Italian, they continued this tradition of bad Italian, of fractured Italian. And Alberto Sordi was the one who dubbed Laurel and Hardy. In the 1950s, however, he emerged as a major comic actor in his own right. In conclusion, I would like to emphasize that La Grande Guerra is one of many films in which 20th century Italian history is seen through the vicissitudes of an individual. Sordi is frequently the protagonist of these historical films. It's most likely for this reason that in Italy, as I said before, Sordi is known as Il Nostro Albertone Nazionale our great national Albert. In tonight's film, Sorde plays a soldier who seems to embody the Italians do not fight stereotype. He goes to war after doing everything he can to avoid it. A big hit with both the public and the critics, the film, although ostensibly about the First World War, can also be seen as being about war more generally. I hope these comments will help you enjoy the film. Thank you.